Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Good to catch up. Good to catch up too. <laughs> Today on A Beer with Starlo, I'm catching up with a good mate of mine, Matt Trippett. Now, Matt is a an accomplished fly casting instructor and a very good fishing guide, but what he's probably better known for these days is a wonderful initiative called the Fly Program. Matt, how would you explain the Fly Program? Essentially, in very, very simple terms, uh, and I'll share probably a little bit more about the story in a moment, but mm. the Fly Program is an early intervention-based program about using nature-based experiences, primarily around fly fishing as our, as our, as our major activity, uh, but also using things like mountain bikes, uh, healthy eating, and real experiences that we seem to forget mm, that we mm. can have in today's fairly hectic world. Um, the focus is on Australian adult men at mm -hmm. this stage of the program's life. We're focused around early intervention um, when guys are experiencing stress, whether it be the workplace, anxiety, uh, or even you know, getting into things like depression and mm. things like that and creating an environment where we can create strong and powerful means to break down you know, to create powerful pathways to yep. connect with men and uh, and really, I suppose, create some strong camaraderie between men um, so that we can, you know, we have peers to support us. One of the most horrible statistics in the whole mental health sector is that one in two men will say that they don't have somebody that they can talk to. Mm. And so we've got to create a culture and environment where we can change that. Mm. And what a wonderful way to do that through, you know, recreational yep. fishing. And you were prompted to start all this through a very personal experience yep. within your family, weren't you? Yeah. Now, I went through a fairly privileged upbringing. I had mum and dad who were together. I had a great relationship with my parents. Lots of cases, people don't have that opportunity now. Um, I went to a really good school. I went to university. I got a, a great job. I had a wonderful opportunity to play rugby union at quite a high level. Um, life was pretty good and I got married young, mm. family young and in my mid-twenties I went through some pretty pretty difficult um, challenges that really shut me down that I didn't know how to handle. One of the biggest people uh, supporting me through that period of time was my brother-in-law Justin um, and he said some pretty hard stuff to me that put me back in line but it was said with a lot of love and, yeah. and dignity um, and a bit over five years ago Justin took his life. Um, so. Uh, having somebody support me um, and seeing the benefits of exercising our bodies but being in the outdoors mm. it's just such a wonderful powerful environment where as a fishing guide I saw guys didn't matter if they were a bricklayer or a barrister that they would be talking to you about their lives within 10 minutes of meeting them when you're yeah. standing on a river yeah. so there's just such a wonderful opportunity for us to have conversations of meaning and substance in those places so it's not really a genius idea it's it's I think just a safe environment that's clinically proven to support men's health. Yeah, and it's such a it's such an important thing, isn't it? And the the, the suicide rate in Australia, especially amongst men, is is terrifying. It is. And the thing that's somewhat terrifying is that um, our mental health, uh, our government invest in the mental health sector. It's over 88% of our resources are invested at clinical support, right. so the clinical intervention. And it really made me think that we've got a great environment where we can do some early intervention-based programs or post-clinical-based programs where guys have got a handle on their life. Um, the, the, the suicide statistics that you refer to, they haven't abated for 40 years. In mm. fact, in the last 12 months, they've gone up by, I think it was something like 1.7%. So we're, we're looking at now about six men every day in Australia are going to decide to take their life. Mm. There's no other way out. Mm. And, uh, and it's pretty it's pretty horrible. Mm. That doesn't factor in single vehicle accidents. Well, exactly. And There's a lot of yeah. statistics there that yeah. don't show up. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I think the problem's much, much bigger. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, okay, so in a practical mm. sense, how does the program work? It takes men who might yep. have faced some challenges and it what it brings them together yeah so um obviously we're we're very very new we're we're into our second season of programs mm -hmm. um as a registered health promotion charity we um take um you know gifts from the community from government from sponsors where we can subsidize people's entry into the program mm -hmm. 
largely through social media because we don't have a lot of resources, a, uh, a community referrals program. So mm -hmm. let's use you and Joe as an example. Mm -hmm. Joe says, Matt, listen, my husband Steve has gone through this stress, okay? And it might be, um, you know, it might be work related. Yep. She can go onto our website and she can make a community referral. Right. Or Steve himself can make a referral yep. himself. Or a mate of mine. Or a mate. Yep. Or you could do it together. Yeah. So we've had scenarios where brothers have come away together. We've mm. had a father and a son come away together. And you you share a brief in a very secure manner. Um, we've got a, uh, through a secure website, uh, a you know, your story, yep. we read it, we can analyze it, and we say, yep, you fit the profile, which is a fairly wide profile. We're mm -hmm. not in a position to, to help you out if you need clinical support. Sure. You know, we're mm -hmm. not aiming to do that. Um, but, yeah, you can make a self-referral. Yep. You can refer a mate. Uh, your wife can do it. Your children can do it. Um, and to hit the profile, it's an Australian adult male at this stage. Right. So we're looking at 18 years and above. Okay. Um, but there will be some news in the near future where this will expand probably across both genders and, mm. and ages. Excellent. And what's the typical size of a group and how does the course run? Yep. We, we look to bring down to the New South Wales Snow Mountains. At this stage, we'll probably have some new territories that we're going to be operating out of very shortly. Um, and people will come down for a four-day adventure retreat, which is largely around, you know, fly fishing programs and uh, and some camping options and bush cooking and real tangible things that are just excites us as boys. And yeah. it's in our DNA. Yeah. Like, we're, you know, it's starting a fire without a lighter. <laughs> all of these things. Um, and uh, over that four days, we do a lot of mental fitness tasks intertwined throughout the activities. And they're... They're iconic activities. We do things that, you know, they're memories that you'll take to the grave. The things that we do are just remarkable. To mm. see a guy from the city never fish in his life before, learn how to tie his own fly, cast his own line, catch a fish, and then sometimes even that fish goes straight to the coals yeah. on a fire that he lit and he made. Um, it's really engaging those very, very simple but really important things that we typically lose a lot mm. in our lives. Mm. The next stage of the program goes into a remote learning module for the next seven and a half weeks. So it's eight weeks in its totality. Um, and the guys through a forum and through a, a book that we've designed with some clinical support from psychologists and marketers and all sorts of things, we've brought together this amazing book that uh, the guys can read through. There's a mental fitness task to do each week. Uh, to repeat throughout the week. There's some fishing tasks to do. There's some exercise tasks to do. It's about living um, fuller and healthier lives, but taking our mental health seriously or our mental fitness. Fantastic. Mm. And how many of these are you trying to do a year at the moment? Well, in our first year, we operated programs from October all the way through to May. Mm -hmm. um, and in that period of time, we supported 64 guys from the community, wow. uh, which was um, four people above a very... Uh, big goal of mine to, to yep. do 60 guys. We try to keep the groups to about six to eight individuals and uh, This year we're looking at doubling operations mm -hmm. um, and Yeah, we're, we're hoping that you know this program throughout um, The steps that it's going to take and then throughout its gestation over the next five or six years that we'll have a center in every state and territory across Australia running programs full-time That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. mate. It's a really great initiative and you've obviously uh, got lots of success stories already do you, you you stay in contact with a lot of the people that do the course yeah absolutely yeah i think um it's something we we, we have a you know we there's hashtags everywhere it's a bit of a hashtag that we use called men in flight brother mm. I, I think it probably stems a lot from my involvement in the rugby field is that you sort of kind of put your body on the line for the for your for your teammates yeah. and you create a very strong family culture and people will understand that in high stress jobs like police or ambos or fireys or military um, I think really from the program we create a brotherhood and if one guy sort of is going through a rough patch mm. whether it be in whatever context there's four or five guys on the phone immediately saying mate what's going on talk to me yeah. um, I'm going to catch up we're going for a fish on Saturday mm. and mm. and um, and we do that through a central hub where all the guys are connected through this forum. So mm -hmm. we have mini forums and then it goes into like this big forum. Yeah. And the guys are sharing photos of their kids and um, all different types of things that they're doing. Your funding at the moment, you've, you've got, yeah. obviously had quite a bit of support from sponsors. That's, yeah. been, that's been important. My wife and I didn't have a cent to our name as far as starting this organisation. And 
uh, I think there was just a, a great sense of urgency and purpose which enabled us to really, when doors were shut, to just find a new way to get through there. And I was being very, very fortunate to have some some great networks through the through the fishing industry in particular and yeah. the outdoor industry. Um, also had a very good network uh, with Anytime Fitness here in Australia, knowing the owner and um, and Rich and Jess Peel invested based on an idea, mm. one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of their own money wow. into this organisation to kick it off the ground. Yeah. Um, that uh, equated immediately to being able to set up our constitution and all of the technical things. Mm. Um, which has been incredibly well supported by my Vanderberg lawyers in Canberra. They did it all at pro bono. And I think it just became a snowball of people really identifying that this is a worthwhile and worthy cause and that men's health impacts women, it mm, impacts children, mm. and um, probably put all of those things aside. It's also a fairly sexy product mm. for, you know, the likes of a sponsor to come on board. And, sure. and it's been an easy, easy sell. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it hasn't come with a lot of hardship and a lot of work. You know, I was doing two full-time jobs for about 24 months, mm -hmm. um, as well as doing some guiding on the side in that period of time. I was operating, you know, probably off six hours maximum a night in <laughs> sleep and used up six weeks of holidays in 12 months pretty quickly in travelling around Australia networking. Yeah. I want to catch up with you again um, on a beer with Stalo a couple of times and talk a bit about, you know, fly fishing and, mm. and some of your other passions and fly casting and all mm. those sort of things. But I really wanted to get into the guts of uh, yeah. of the fly program today, mate. And uh, look, I take my hat off to, to what you've done. I've watched it since well before the start and, mm. as you know, been a, mm. been a big supporter. And, uh, mate, I'll, um, I'll thanks buddy. to the success of <laughs> the fly program. Cheers. Well, thanks, Stalo. What do you reckon about the uh, the crankshaft, mate? I'm just a fan of Canberra beers, full stop. Mm. But the, this is probably, you know, I said to you earlier, I probably have maybe four of these a week as a special treat, and uh, they they're absolutely fantastic, yeah, it's absolutely a, fantastic. It's a good drop. Yeah, fits well with our program too, being a you know a bit of mountain bike riding yeah. going on in there as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah. I know the guys love love riding their bikes. Mm. It's good. Good stuff.